Hello there, and welcome to another Leadership Reflection. Today's topic is building versus management. And that's a big set of phrases within the Maximum CEO training, and something that I would like to reflect a little bit with here. So what is building and what is management, and why would I contrast that in any way? So building, of course, is bringing about something new. Building new buildings, coming up with new plans, expanding the kingdom of God, exploring new areas. And one thing about building is that it always requires expansion from your organization as well. Because as you explore this new area, you also need to, of course, take care of what you have built already and you have to make it even better. So you need more leaders to manage and lead this conquer here and uh, manage and lead these existing things here. So you need, uh, as a growing organization, you consistently need more and more leaders and also more and more team members. And you obviously need a lot of discipleship in order to achieve that. So that's a growing organization, visible both in terms of expansion in areas where we're working without sacrificing the areas where you have been worked in, working in the past, uh, as well as discipleship, people growing, increase in terms of people and leaders within the system. And then we have management. Management is not building, obviously, because what, what's the point of contrasting that I figure them? Anyway, it's having this project and this goal and this yearly plan and this product that we do, for example. So this is my product. And my goal is to make that product as good as possible and keep it going. So just matching the product and helping it not to die off and making it a little bit better over time. So... Of course, here we're not expanding the new areas, so we don't need new leaders. I can just, I can do fine. You know, we've been doing this for 30 years. So I think I can do it. You know, if, if I'm not, but this guy can do it. Just uh, new people come only by replacement, not really by expansion. And the problems, well, we've been probably facing the inner problems for years and we'd be solving them and so on and so forth, just dealing with the problems. Usually the bigger problems come when the markets change. So they come from the outside and they actually can force you into reacting, into changing your operations, into adapting into a new environment. But in a management level organization, you are the note on someone else's agenda. So you're the variable that can be modified and, and set and affected and pushed. And, you know, you're the, you're the mutable thing that can be pushed around by someone else's agenda. Within a building organization, you're the guy who's taking offense. That's, for example, in the kingdom of God. You're going there and you're defeating the forces of the enemy and you're establishing new culture, new way of doing things, God's power, God's presence in the area, so on and so forth. So really, you're setting the agenda, and the demons and, and the people are whatever needs to, they need to adjust, because there's a new ruler in town, so to speak. <laughs> that ruler is just Anyway, uh, so these are very proactive, organizations because by nature they're always conquering new areas because they need room for expansion and building and these by nature are reactive and usually when you are proactive you get better choices because you can choose do we want to go there next do we want to go here next or maybe there would be a good area of expansion what area we want to conquer next, of course, without sacrificing our existing things. But what next? You have options. But here, the choice is forced upon you. So, oh, point. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, 
So for example, oh, well, AI is coming to market. What will we do with the AI thing here? So instead of being the organization that built the AI, now your organization that's reacting to the presence of an AI technology, whatever. So your question is, what can we do in this situation? It's much less, much less options, much more limited, usually much worse place to negotiate and things like that. Um, so one example of this is of course, if we want to go there is the body of Christ versus traditional church building based church. And the body of Christ is about expanding, conquering areas, discipling all nations, bringing the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven, changing people's thoughts, behavior, renewing their minds, you know, expansion, building, getting people's callings into action, and uh, really bringing out the best in people. And if you're interested in that sort of thing, check out the teaching on or the reflection video about the IPO process, an excellent way to bring out those callings and help people to fulfill what God has put in them. But anyway, it's by nature expansive, expansive. Uh, while traditional church oftentimes, not always, is about management. It's about, well, let's get slightly better pews here and slightly better songs slightly better sermons, but let's just try to keep our operations going, maybe increase in levels of quantity, but not really starting any new projects. And if we want to start a new project because we don't have leaders, because we don't haven't developed leaders, because we haven't done discipleship, which is, by the way, the number one thing that Jesus asked us to do, um, then if we want to, let's say, start an evangelism side hustle, then we would have to take some of our leaders, our two leaders here, and send them here. So the quality of our service would drastically be diminished because we don't have the capacity in terms of leaders. So it's not just about what you do. It's also in terms of do you do <laughs> discipleship? And also, what's your vision? Because if you're called to change the nations, then it's obvious that you have to do some changes and you have to do some crawling. And you have to change yourself, you have to find a team, you have to go there and expand and actually get things done. You know, for example, if you want to change the cheats, change the city. And let's say you have a mafia in that city. Well, you need to deal with the mafia and expel them. Or if there's these banks that will take usury or whatever, then you need to renew them or replace them. Or if there's a lot of adultery in the city, then you need to deal with that. You need to go there and expand and deal with those areas, real life things. You need to see a real life results. If your vision about is, is about changing the city. But if your vision is about activity, uh, bringing good services when we feel like it, then there's no need to go there. Why? Your numbers don't change, your measurement numbers don't change at all. So, mm, I mean, if we have time, if we find space, if we have extra, extra leaders, then we will go there. Same thing with discipleship. I mean, it's, it's a nice thing, but, you know, it's not part of our primary plan. Let's work on it if we find time, some time. Whereas here it is, if we want to do it, we have to do discipleship, you know? Because otherwise we don't have leaders, and if we want to have leaders, then we don't have anything. So, uh, your vision also determines how much you have to do discipleship. And how much you have to do in discipleship affects how much will you be able to expand, also how much you will expand and build instead of manage. So really it starts with vision and being obedient to God. 
with with the vision that he has given you and your calling. But the next step, huge major important step, discipleship. So that it is just lightly touching on this topic of building versus management. I hope you find this interesting. I'm sure you have more thoughts on this matter because this is such a light reflection right now. Uh, it would be very interesting to hear maybe your comments, maybe even your video, or let's have a discussion on this or something. Uh, but what do you think about this? How do you see this? Have you seen this applied? Have you applied this these principles yourselves? So have you been like, uh, let's say in a work environment, have you been in cultures, of management cultures, or building cultures? How was that like? How did you experience it? Did you find room for personal growth? Um, are you still there? Uh, and what what would you look in an organization you want to work with and that sort of things? It would be very interesting to hear your perspective, get your wisdom on this. And what kind of insight can you bring into this topic? So uh, let's hear from each other more. And I guess see you in the next leadership reflection.